someone slipped and fell? Was that someone you? typically expect there won't be brass, there won't be lilies, there will be us, and it will be a little bit more like uh, the service that we would have had at sunrise outside. It will be informal, it will be light and joy-filled, and then when we are finally back together, whenever that happens, then we'll do Easter right and give it the glory and pomp and circumstance that it deserves. But we're going to have a good service next week, and we know that you'll be ready to join us as well. Thank you, Pastor Heidi. You are invited, in fact, encouraged to join with us on our introit. Many of you may already know it. Hosanna, Jesus is the rock.
is from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them for you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophets. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, fowl of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to J David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in highest heaven. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. <clears throat> Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. As we go to a time of prayer, I invite you, as always for the last several weeks, to keep our first responders, our medical personnel, those who are on the front lines in the battle against the coronavirus. This candle burns to shine a light on the work that they are doing to keep us all safer in this confusing and difficult time of pandemic. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you amazed at your power, amazed at your triumphant entry, knowing that you are so much greater than we can ever comprehend. It is with that knowledge, Lord, that we come before you now, hat in hand, on bended knee with humble hearts, and offer before you in silence the names of those who we wish to be blessed and comforted by your presence. Holy, eternal God, we give you thanks for your presence among us, for the spirit of the Holy One who came to comfort and accompany us on our journey. God, we are grateful for your presence in our lives, and we are grateful that Jesus came glorifying the flesh by becoming one of us and coming to teach us as well how to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
church. <laughs> if there are children in your house, go get them. It's their time. And while they're coming from wherever they might be, I would remind you we're going to have a chance to share communion. So if you didn't plan ahead for that and you want to, at some point in this service, you might want to hit pause and go find your bread and your beverage that you will use to share communion with us. So today is Palm Sunday. And normally that would mean that we'd have all these children and they'd all have a branch of palms and they'd be waving them and we'd collect them and we'd lay them at the altar. It's a little different this year, but we still have palms and they're right here on our hands. So as you go through this service, I invite you to lift them and wave them. There are other things you can do with your palms. You can clap when we have wonderful music. <laughs> You can pray, whether you choose to be one who prays with your palms together, or your hands interlaced, or whether you prefer to pray with your palms up and open. Another thing you can do with your palms. I'm sure you can think of other ways to praise God with your hands without having those branches. But you know what? If you need a branch, get your mom or dad or whoever's with you to go outside and help you find something green. or Go to our website, and there is a picture there, a coloring picture that you can print off and cut out and have a palm frond to wave and to celebrate. And you can sing Hosanna in the highest. Lord, save us. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for the many, many, many things we can do with our hands, whether we are cheering or praying or helping others by reaching out. Help us always to do these things to bring glory to you. In your name we pray, amen. So now comes the time when we invite you to remember that the ministry and mission of this congregation and of Christ's church continues whether we are gathering on Sunday morning or not. You would be amazed the many things that are still going on, even in this bare bones environment, as we pray for each other, as we work to continue and keep things going every day. So there are a couple of ways you can go online to our website, and there's a nice little green button that says donate, and it's not that challenging. If you need help, call me. <laughs> I did it to make sure I knew how it works. If you prefer to write a check, the address is there in the online bulletin. It's 13740 Pearl Road, Strongsville, 44136. And the mailman is still coming every single day. And we truly, truly, deeply appreciate your supporting the mission of our congregation. Thank you.
from Matthew 26, verses 14 through 27 from the New International Version. One of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city of a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so.
while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Gracious Holy God, pour out your Spirit virtually and in each household on the bread and the cup we place before you. May it become for us the body and blood of Christ and renew us and restore us into oneness with you. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. Take as often as you eat and do this in remembrance of me. The blood of the new covenant poured out for each one of us throughout eternity. Whenever you drink this cup together, do this in remembrance of Christ. Take and drink. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now let us sing together. Let us break bread together, all three verses. them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, 
Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. And Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back again, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. one of the twelve arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, 
One of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus took him to Caiaphas the high priest where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled but Peter followed him at a distance right up to the courtyard of the high priest he entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death but they did not find any though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophecy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway 
where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one, of you do, which one do you want me to release to you, 
Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders all mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe it in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults upon him.
until three in the afternoon, darkness settled over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge, and he filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely, surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Jesus took the body, and he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and he placed it in his own new tomb, the one he had cut out of the rock, and he rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb, and went away. 